Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for March 10th, 2022 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. I got a package in the mail today and it was my phone scope digiscoping adapter. So I'm looking forward to putting this to the test in the field and I'll probably post a review of it sometime soon. Today was partly sunny with a high layer of clouds and light northwest winds, although most of the afternoon it was a northeast lake breeze that kind of shut down the raptor flight. The first highlight of the day was when I was at the end of the boardwalk and this mink ran across the ice right in front of me. And I was also excited to finally track down a glaucus gall for the season, especially one that came nice and close to get some photos. Glaucus galls are big and bulky, even bigger than herring galls, and they have those pure white wingtips. And here we have the biggest gall species in the world, great black-backed gall. And you can see how much darker the wings are than the other surrounding ring-billed and herring galls. There were a couple hundred red-winged blackbirds migrating in the morning, and also many around the marsh, setting up their territories and singing. We had two dozen migrating turkey vultures today, but we're still waiting for that first really big push. And on turkey vultures, always look for this small head. Again today we had the situation where all of the geese leave the bay in the early morning, and then later on they all come back at the same time, which is pretty impressive to see thousands of geese in these huge flocks all descending onto the bay. See if you can find the duck that is different in this flock. Most of the flock are northern pintails, and we can see the males have these really long tails, and even the females are really pointy, even though the tail isn't as long. And the bird that is different is actually the leading bird. This is a male mallard. The northern shrike is still around and was putting on a good show, and it was a life bird for at least one visitor today. Here we have a juvenile bald eagle. And remember, the word juvenile means that the bird still has its first set of real feathers. So this bald eagle would have been born last spring or summer. And to identify juvenile bald eagles, we're looking at a dark head, a dark underside to the body, and an even trailing edge to the wings. We see that none of the feathers have been replaced. In second and third year bald eagles, we see some longer retained juvenile feathers, along with shorter feathers that have been replaced. Here we have two different juvenile bald eagles playing or fighting, and we can see the same thing. Both of them have dark heads and dark undersides of the body, and even trailing edges to the wings. Here we have a juvenile red-tailed hawk that is streaming overhead. And how do we know it's a red-tailed hawk? Remember, we're always looking for these patagial bars, although they're quite faint in this photo, and the belly band. And we know it's a juvenile because there's no dark trailing edge to the wing, and the tail is not red. It's more white or brownish with a bit of banding. Here we have a light morph rough-legged hawk, and these to me always just look like a jumble of light areas and dark areas. So you have the light head, the light tail, light on the wings, but then you have the really dark belly, these big square patches on the wings, and the tip of the tail. Here we have an adult red-tailed hawk. So again, we know it's a red tail because it has these dark patagial bars and the belly band. And we know it's an adult because it has a dark trailing edge to the wing, and a red tail. And this bird is missing a large chunk out of its right wing, and it looks like it might be missing multiple feathers, so this might be the result of damage rather than of natural molt. Here we have an adult red-shouldered hawk, so it's orange underneath, and we see the tail pattern. It looks like a chalkboard with thin chalk lines on it, and the wingtips have pale crescents. Here we have a bald eagle in a glide, and this might not be quite a full adult yet. You see it's still got a little bit of white specking. Here's a bird that many of you might be familiar with from your bird feeders. This is a male house sparrow, 
And actually, it's a pretty rare bird for us to see at the Hawk Watch. We only see them a handful of times throughout the season. So I was happy to see it this one time just to get it on the list for the season, but we don't need any more. Here we have a flock of American widgeons. And I was teaching someone today how to identify widgeons on the water so that the males have green heads and a white stripe on the forehead. When they're a flight, we can't really see those field marks, but they're still quite distinctive underneath how they have a brown breast in the front, but then their belly is white, and then they have this black in the back. In this photo, we have three males, the second, third, and fourth birds, and a female leading, and we can see that the female plumage is overall similar to the male, but maybe a little bit more brown. If we take a look at the eBird list, we see that we had 52 species today, including tons of continuing waterfowl. So just all of the regular ducks you would expect we're still seeing in fairly decent numbers. And the bay is really opening up now, so we're getting closer looks at some of the ducks in the close channel, um, especially from the end of the boardwalk. And if we take a look at hawk count, we see that our migrating raptor totals for today were 24 turkey vultures, two bald eagles, one red-shouldered hawk, seven red-tailed hawks, one peregrine falcon, for a total of 35 migrants. And our two new species for the season were glaucus gall and house sparrow. The forecast for tomorrow is cloudy skies, followed by a mixture of light rain and snow, High in the low 40s, winds east-northeast and fairly light. So I would not expect this to be a good day for migration because of the lack of sunshine and also the fact that the wind is out of the east. We just don't do very well on winds that come out of the east or northeast. Any wind that's coming off of the lake, we tend not to get many migrants. For Saturday, we have a potential winter storm, and I've seen anywhere ranging from estimates of 1 inch up to 12 inches, so... Um, I think that will mostly be Friday night into Saturday. So we'll see what happens. Um, but Saturday will be windy with snow showers and strong to very strong northwest winds. So I would not expect many migrants on this day either. Sunday is looking cloudy with a chance of snow showers, but west-southwest winds. So decent winds, but it's not really warming up, only going barely above freezing. So we'll keep an eye on Sunday to see if it'll be a good day. All right, that's it for today. As always, if you enjoy this video series, please press the like button and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of these daily updates. This is David Brown. Thanks for watching.